So welcome all. Today we are seeing something about uh, streaming audio video. In the last uh, video we have seen something about something basics of multimedia. Today we are going to see some uh, thing about uh, the streaming of uh, audio video. So we are starting with this uh, uh, streaming of a stored uh, audio video. We have seen there were three types of uh, this audio video. One was stored, another was live and then it was interactive. So let us start with this stored audio video. So here what happens actually there can be four different ways. Uh, first approach can be using a web server. Second can be uh, using a web server with uh, meta file. Third is media server and then media server with uh, uh, RTSP. Okay. So let us see um, uh, what is uh, what happens if we use web server. So basically, uh, the browser sends a request to the web server and web server responds with a file. Now the thing is, in case of this uh, uh, server-based application, actually, your compressed audio or video file can be uh, saved as text file. So it can be downloaded as a text file. So in the response you will get a text file. But the client or browser will use this get request and HTTP get request and these things to get this file. Now this browser needs to play this audio video, right? Multimedia. So for this it will need, to, I should say, media player yeah. so it will take help of this uh, media player and then this media player will play your uh, audio video file so usually it is ok but uh, a drawback can be that uh, it has to download the whole file since it is a stored uh, server a server is storing the audio video file and uh, it is a uh, request response based system where it will respond with uh, mm. the full file the full file needs to be downloaded and then it can be played so depending on it uh, uh, it is audio or video it can be maybe 10 mb or if it is video it may be hundreds of mb right so it needs to be downloaded and then it will be played with the multimedia player now if we think about the second approach where uh, we will have um, web server with meta file uh, now this in this case this media player can directly uh, interact with the web server how what this browser will do browser will uh, ask for meta file only uh, it will get the response the meta file it will give this meta file to media player and this media uh, player will ask for audio video live oh, sorry audio video file from the web server okay so this uh, meta file will have the information about this uh, audio video file you know? so now it sends the request for audio video file and uh, then what happens web server responds now the third approach if you have a media server so in that case what will happen you will have a web server and you will have a media server web server will store the information related to um, meta file and this media server will give the response so the HTTP client will access uh, the meta file information from this web server. This meta file is passed to the uh, media player and this media player uh, uses the URL in the meta file to access the media server to download the file. Downloading can take place by any protocol hmm, that is based on UDP. right? and the media server responds right 
Now we are going for uh, the fourth approach which is media server with uh, RTSP. In this case what will happen the same thing HTTP client access the web server with get request it will get the information related to the uh, file and this is passed to the media player and this in this media player it starts a setup uh, it sends a setup message uh, to create a connection with the media server and then media server will uh, send some response then this uh, media player will actually send a play message to start the playing start the downloading okay then there will be a response where um, this uh, i should say uh, the audio video file is downloaded using the uh, another protocol which runs over uh, udp now if at all uh, the connection is broken using the something uh, uh, these things if it happens the audio video comes and then you use a tear down message uh, so media player uses a tear down message to uh, break the connection okay it it says that yes we have received the file so it responds with a uh, message that yes okay we are breaking the connection so these are uh, all the things it is not only these things some uh, other kind of messages like uh, a pause message can be uh, sent uh, a resume message can be sent this is these are also messages can be sent in between these uh, transmission right now we are moving towards uh, streaming uh, live audio video let us see streaming live video audio video it is similar to broadcasting of uh, uh, audio and video by uh, radio and television station uh, so instead of broadcasting uh, to the air the station uh, broadcast through the internet that is only the thing so similarity between um, um, streamed uh, sorry stored audio audio video and live audio video uh, they are both sensitive to delays neither can accept uh, retransmission okay but also has a difference what is the difference in the first application the communication is unicast and on demand in the second the communication is multicast and live okay so let us say uh, mm, something about real time interactive audio video there were something uh, about uh, this thing uh, okay i will see this interactive letter let me uh, come for these things yeah. so in live transmission what happens So we are discussing these things characteristics okay so relationship actually you can understand uh, how real time data can be transferred so client uh, makes a connection with the server and then server uh, starts sending the packet it sends the first packet second packet and so on so this will be called as a flow Uh, data is being transferred in a flow you can see it was sent uh, from here at 00 it was received at 01 and in this way so after that uh, when it is arrived here it starts playing so live means uh, it is uh, as it is coming it is playing also in between if some packet is delayed in that case the playing video will uh, stop right that stopping actually will be called as uh, jitter 
Huh? Jitter is introduced in real time data by the delay between the packets. Okay, so if there is a, a delay between the packets, so there is a gap between the um, video frames, right? Or maybe audio also. So that will be called as uh, jitter. So what will happen? You can see. Let me show you that whatever is sent here, it received this packet and when it's sent uh, at 10 it should have been received at 11 right but uh, for four seconds it was what millisecond maybe it is waiting so for this period it is zitter and then when it received the packet it started playing so <laughs> this is something now if you think about uh, uh, zitter what can be a solution so they are suggesting this time stamp can be a solution for uh, zitter. If each packet um, has a time stamp uh, that shows the time it was uh, produced relative to the first packet, then the uh, receiver can add this time to the uh, time at which it is started playing. So it can, whether it was uh, coming late, but it can understand that this is the same mm, this is starting from here okay so now uh, one other thing can be playback buffer mm. is it here or not okay we can timestamp the packet and separate the arrival time from playback time okay yeah playback buffer so, to be able to separate the arrival time from the playback time, uh, we can use this buffer to store the data until they are played back. Hmm. So, here what happens when the session begins, uh, the bits keep coming, they are stored in this buffer and then uh, later on it is played. That is the thing about playback buffer. No problem. And okay, what it was saying is playback buffer is required for real time traffic. Okay. Now, can we see some more things? Okay, ordering. Huh? There can be particular ordering. So, we can assign a sequence number to each packet uh, for this real time traffic. Huh? One important thing is multicasting. Hmm. So, this uh, multimedia plays a primary role in uh, audio and video conferencing, you understand, right? So, data can be distributed uh, using multicasting methods and you understand that in conferencing uh, two way communication is required between uh, senders and receiver. So, there we need the support of uh, multicasting. Sometimes uh, uh, real time traffic also needs uh, translation, a translation actually uh, translation means changing the encoding of a playload to a lower quality to match the bandwidth of a receiving network. Okay. So these are the things done. Uh, sometimes, uh, if there is more than one source that can be that can send data at uh, the same time. Yeah then we need to mix these data eh? and later on whatever you want to do. So, mixing means combining several streams of traffic into one stream. So, we may need these things mixers. Now, other thing that we will need is for the support from transport layer protocols. Okay. So, oh, suppose TCP uh, with uh, all its sophistication is not that suitable for interactive multimedia traffic. Mm. 
because the retransmission of the packet is not allowed right udp is more uh, suitable for interactive multimedia traffic what happens uh, this udp supports multicasting and uh, has uh, uh, no retransmission strategy okay however uh, udp has no provision for uh, time stamping uh, sequencing or mixing so uh, new transport protocol real time uh, um, transport protocol rtp this provide these uh, missing features so let us see rtp let us see this rtp in the next video